We begin with worrying news about the increased pressure facing the medical staff at the University Hospital of the West Indies due to the surge in COVID-19 cases. The hospital's leadership said the COVID areas at the Emergency Medicine Division, including the field hospital, have reached full capacity. Now, patients going to UHWI are being advised to expect delays. Medical Chief of Staff at the University Hospital of the West Indies, Dr. Carl Bruce, now joins us via Zoom. Good evening, Doc, and thank you so much for joining us. This feels like deja vu. Here we are again. Uh, you said the UHWI is at capacity. What do those numbers look like currently? Janela, thanks for having us. Um, at the present time, um, we have a significant number of patients in the emergency division. Um, we are fortunate to have the field hospital, the Holden Ward, um, to help us out of the situation as compared to previous surges. We have 30 patients in that field hospital at the present time. But we also have the COVID ward, um, which is full. And what we've had to do, we have tried to consolidate the non-COVID ward by transferring patients who have the chronic non-communicable diseases onto selected wards and creating additional space. So we are currently at um, opening ward three, but we have another 24 patients who have tested positive who are in non-COVID area. So that ward has a capacity of 25 and therefore we have filled that additional space we have created already. And so the minister and the Ministry of Health would have visited us today to look at all the areas, including the emergency division and the field hospital, as well as a drive-through areas. And indeed, as you can see, it's proven to be a real challenge. I think what has happened in part is that people have heard that there is the virus this time is not as severe, but the virus is more contagious. And as a result of the virus being more contagious, there are a lot more people who are getting the virus. So at our own testing site at the university, of the 120 patients we tested yesterday, of the 180 patients we tested yesterday, 93 were positive. So if a smaller percentage of those patients get severe, we are still at capacity. And that's why we're here again, urging the public to take responsibility and to communicate with the public what is happening at the institution. And it's not just these COVID patients, but you also have staff who are home because they, they have come in contact with positive cases or they have the virus. That's correct. We have 182 staff as of 6 p.m. yesterday who have tested positive. That, the testing for today will be in shortly, so you would expect that number to reach over 182. Of that, 80 nurses have tested positive. And so the system which was already short of nursing staff, um, is again um, under more stress to provide care to the increased number of patients. And as you can see, we have had to mobilize all the planning and the resources, the oxygen cylinders, et cetera. So you are correct to use the term deja vu, but we are asking the public to work with us to try and see if we can get this situation under control and to save every possible patient that we can. Do you have sufficient oxygen? We know what happened last year. Um, how are you in terms of your capacity to deal with um, such increases? Yes, we have adequate oxygen. We, we are very fortunate that IGL has worked with us. We have both um, what we call the large bulk oxygen, liquid oxygen cylinder, as well as we have the mobile trailer. In addition to which you can see the trucks deliver cylinders on a continuous basis. So we have adequate oxygen. What we don't have is space. And that's complicated by the fact that we now don't have enough staff. And the percentage um, of positive patients is rising, even as the Scotiabank Center, which is a non-COVID area, is also under stress because there are 30 patients there who have a non-COVID diagnosis who also needs a bed in the hospital. And, and, and Doc, what can you tell us about the, 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 the condition of these hospitalized COVID patients? How severe are they? We are not ventilating as many patients as previously um, with the Delta surge. But what we still have is a lot of patients requiring oxygen because they are hypoxic, a term all of us have come to know. So they can't stay home because their oxygen level is very low. 
So we're very fortunate that they don't have to be ventilated and we're hoping that we are able to save many of those patients. But the reality is between January 3rd and January 14th, we have lost 11 patients. So this virus is not mild at all. And we're saying to the public, you better take heed, take responsibility and ensure that we go back to the basic measures and ensure that you come to the university and visit the vaccination center. And let's see if we can get some immunity to protect the patients that we have. Okay. And I know that you have been stressing vaccination, Doc. No, absolutely. What's clear to us, even in this wave, as in the previous wave, the most severe patients are unvaccinated. So yes, we are seeing some patients who are vaccinated, but their disease is mild and they get discharged early. So if that's the situation, you and I can overcome a common cold, you know, a slight flu. The challenge is with the severe patients. And when there are so many of them that the hospital does not have the capacity to admit them, then the system gets under stress. But importantly, the quality of care that we'd like to deliver to individual patients, that touch that we would like to give is just not available because the staff is short and the patient load is up. Thank you so much, Medical Chief of Staff at the University Hospital of the West Indies, Dr. Carl Bruce, for that update.